In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to EQ the drum bus. If you're like me, I like to group all my drum sounds and send them to a bus. And on that bus, I like to apply some glue compression and maybe some gluing EQ as well. But it's really, for me, more about tidying up the group and processing some dynamic motion in there. And to do that, I think the best equalizer to use is FabFilter Pro Q3. The first thing I like to do is to just play the audio and see what frequency spectrum we get displaying here. Okay, as you can see, we've got some little dominant bits here. We're peaking at around 50 odd. Again here at 678, again at about 11K. This is just a guide. So you need to look at what's happening in terms of the dips. So we've got a bit of a pronounced dip here. And we've got a lot happening here in the air band. So let's start. The first thing to do is to put in a low cut and to pick a slope of 48. And I like to do that because I like to do brick wall cuts. I'm not using shafts because I really don't want a gentle boost or a cut. I want pretty dramatic cuts like this, so I'm using a low cut here. The beauty of the Q3 and the Q2 is you've got solo function on every band. So let's have a quick listen to this. I can just hear some of that low level rumble. So at around 40 odd hertz, we can afford to just take everything out. So straight away, it's cleared up some of that murky low end. Okay, next thing we need to do is address this dip here. And what I'm gonna do is because this dip is quite important. It's the area that goes from the low to low mids all the way into the mid. So we need to do something here. And what I'm gonna do is use the dynamic equalizer here and give it some motion. So just there. So you can see how the audio is moving up and down here. Let's get rid of the freeze. Another thing that I like to do is to come here to where the fundamental of the bass is sitting, or the kick drum in this instance, so around 40, 50 hertz, and go just a little past it. Let's put in a node there, say around 65, 70. And then I like to boost up, but with a very tight bandwidth. The idea being that that frequency is going to resonate a little and jump up and down. So what we'll do is we'll get the dynamic motion going on this as well. Let's see how that works. Go to 80, sounds good. So we got that nice tight hitting 80 hertz there. And because we've got the slopes here of 12 dB on either side, we're still getting a lot of boosting happening at 60, 70, etc. So we've addressed the low end. We've cut out all the rumble. We've got a bit of dynamics going on here in between that dip between the two main frequency areas. Let's now go to this air band, which I think is a little bright. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to extend it first. Pick a tighter slope so that we're really concentrating more on this and we're not invading too much into the mid to high mid and low high frequencies here. And what I want to do here is just afford it a little motion, but watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to drop it. 
And now look at the motion that's playing in there. So I've got it dropping below the axis and then back up again. And let's just make that a little bit steeper there, which is perfect. And this time I'd like to bring in the threshold here and manually adjust to taste. So what I've done here is I've brought the threshold down enough that I've got an equidistant or rather balanced or symmetrical boost cut, boost cut. It's actually not a boost and cut in the traditional sense. Remember, what this thing does is it applies compression and expansion. And you can actually apply, in some essence, both if you're working across the axis. So what I've got is a drop and a boost and a drop and a boost. And that wavering is what's giving us life at this end. Sounds great. What I'd like to do now is go to around here with a bell, and I'm going to solo this so I can listen to it. Just that bit, where it's just slightly resonant on the hats. I'm going to tighten that, and this time, now push the range up. So I've got that little bit of the hi-hat there, that was a bit too bright, being pushed up while this is being pushed down, so to speak. In effect, I've got some kind of expansion happening with compression. Now this is a lovely way to tidy up and tighten your drum group. Things to take into account is get rid of all the low level rumble. You will get summing going from kick to other sounds that share some low frequencies. So tidy that up if the air band is too bright, attenuated, or get it at least to have a motion that's attenuating gently, not boosting past the axis here. So in effect, we could have this just behave like this. So it's not going above the axis here, and it's just wavering around here. If you find that's too aggressive, Raise your threshold, just got some slight movement there. It sounds great, and that's how you tidy up the drum bus. You could do more extensive cuts, so for example, here. And as an example, let me show you what happens if I extend this. So we've got this nice slapping up, slapping down kind of motion going on. You can see I'm dropping below the axis and above it. But it's eaten into the bass area, so what we need to do is tighten the bandwidth. And now we're not getting that resonant sort of boost happening around here somewhere. Sounds great, so play around. Just make sure that everything that you are treating has a reason. You're not just cutting something for the sake of, you know, making it less pronounced in the mix. You might want to bring it back up again. So why not have this lovely motion that goes all the way up to the axis and then stops there? If you want to make things really pronounced and go above the axis. So make sure to use a combination of expansion and compression. Both are there for you to use to dynamically shape any sound. So enjoy this product. Enjoy the features it gives you.